So let's take a look at how we can build a type safe and composable policy system with TypeScript. So one big common mistake is conflating roles with permissions. So when you think of user management in an organization, you think of roles. So you have administrators, you have users, etc. And the roles ultimately dictate what a user can access. So you protect resources under specific permissions. However, it's far too common to see in code conditions such as if user.role is equal to admin, then do this otherwise fail with a forbidden error. The problem with this is that roles are merely identifiers. So they are identifiers to buckets that hold a subset of permissions. So for example, an administrator would most likely have all permissions available. A user would only have posts read, but not posts delete. Though this gets more nuanced because you could say, okay, an administrator can delete any post while a user can only delete a post that pertains to itself. So instead of checking against roles, what you should do is check against the ACL, so the access control list. So you basically have an access control list which holds all of the available permissions and then on the resources that you want to protect, what you basically do is check against the permissions of the user or well whoever is making the request. So for example, if request.permissions.includes posts delete, then do this. Obviously the permissions would come from a lookup to the database or the coding the authorization token, etc. But obviously, don't get me wrong, roles are incredibly important, and that is why everyone uses RBAC, which is role based access control. So, roles provide a user friendly way of assigning permissions to users. While in code, you never think of roles. So, let me show you how I do it in code. So the first step is building the primitives and that is type safe permission definitions. So we get a compile time validation and clear domain to action relationships. So for example, we can have a domain which would be the posts and in this one you can read, you can delete and you can manage. And what you get back is a union of all of the available permissions. So for this, I created this make permissions utility function where it guarantees that whatever we're passing in is modeled as the main and then the actions. And the actions must be either read, manage or delete. Obviously, you can tailor this however you want. And what we get back is an array of the domain and then the action. So as you can see, the main action, and as you can see by spreading over permissions, then we can use schema.literal for validating the permission set at the runtime, which again is a union of the permissions. So with this, we can now start consuming this permission type. So I'm using the platform library from Effect, which comes with its own HTTP server implementation. So basically an alternative to Nest.js or Express, where you can define middlewares. So you can say what a middleware will fail with and what it is going to provide. And with this, we can assume that the live implementation of this middleware is going to decode the token, validate the permission set, or again, query a database, a Redis cache, whatever it is that you're using. And so we're going to get back the session ID, the user ID, and then a set of permissions. And now with this, we can start defining our policy. So the first and most important concept is how we're going to represent a policy. So a policy is simply an effect which succeeds with nothing. So in the case that we get back a void, that means that we have granted access. 
If we fail with a forbidden, then well, pretty self-explanatory. And obviously this computation can fail with another error. Let's say you're querying the database and that failed for some reason, then we can do a union with the two errors. And then it is going to require the current user makes sense because this is the one that holds the permissions. And again, the computation or the policy can require something such as the database client. So we can do a union with it too. And with this in place, we can now create our policy primitive. So what we're going to be using to create or define the implementation of a policy. So here we have a function policy. We take in a predicate, which is simply a callback that is going to give us the current user. And here we're going to return an effect. We return a boolean, so false, meaning that we have not granted access, true, we have granted granted access and then we preserve the error and the requirements channel and then here we pipe through the current user so we get it here we call the predicate by passing in the current user and finally we check the result if it's true then just return void and if not fail with a forbidden error and that's it with this we can do whatever we want so for example, we can create a with policy helper. So what this is going to do is take in a policy and then it is going to return a function that is going to take in self and it is going to do a zip write. So it is going to execute a policy first sequentially and then it is going to execute self. But this works because if policy fails, then it is going to short circuit everything and hence self will never be executed. So with this, we can now wrap computations and protect it using the policy. So to give you an example, let's say we have insert to database and here we have an effect that promise, which is going to hit the database and whatnot. And now we want to protect this. So only users with the posts create, or I believe it's manage can use this. So we can say with policy. And then we can say policy, we take in the user, we succeed with an effect, and then we simply do a has. So does the user have posts manage? If so, execute self, which would be this one. If not, fail with a forbidden error. So as you can see, it's very, very straightforward. And now with this, we can create our combinators so that we can have composition. So for example, we can have all or and semantics. So all policies must pass. So for this very simple policy is just an effect. So we take in a non empty read only array, and then we do an effect dot all, and they are all going to run sequentially. So the first one that fails, it is going to short circuit everything. Then we have any, which would be or semantics. So at least one policy must pass. And for that, we can say effect dot first success off and then we pass in the policies. As you can see, effect makes this very, very simple. And finally, we need a helper for permission because it is tedious to call policy, then succeed with user.permissions.has. So for that, we can just create a simple wrapper around that. And with this, you have your type safe and composable policy system. So now let's take a look at how you can use it. So you have a restricted endpoint. So again, a promise, you can pipe this through and you simply say with policy and then you can compose them. So all and then must have admin access and then sensitive read. And then we have a flexible endpoint. So our semantics, again, policy with policy and then any and then posts read or comments read. Now what you're seeing here is the blog version of this video. So if you want a detailed walkthrough of how all of this works, make sure to check the description. But anyway, with this, we can now also have attribute based access control. So for example, sometimes we need to make access decisions based on the relationship between the user and the resource. Like is this user the owner of this post or is this 
this user an admin of this forum. So in that case, we can have a posts repo. So here we have our database client, and then we have a find first query, which is simply going to do a where query columns.id is equal to the ID that we pass in. Very simple. And then we can create a posts policy service. So here we get access to the repository, and then we can create two policies. So one is owner. So check if the current user is the owner of a post. And here we say policy dot policy. We take in the current user. We do a find first query. So as you can see, we're also propagating the database errors and the requirements and whatnot over to the parent effect. But then here we can map over the post and then check if the author ID is equal to the user ID, user being the person that made the request. And then you can have a can edit permission. So here, if someone has the posts manage permission, so maybe they are an administrator, then they can edit any post. But also an owner should be able to edit their own post. So here we use or semantics and we can say is owner and we pass in the post ID. Look how elegant this is. You can combine your permission checks with your ABAC checks. And now when you want to use it, all you need to do is yield the posts policy and then you protect the update post computation. So you would use this at your controller layer and then you simply pipe the computation you want to protect with policy and then can edit. And that's it. Now, why are we keeping the policies in a service? Because if you're going to test things, you can easily define your own custom attributes. So you can bypass policies, you can check if it works as intended and whatnot. Now, if you want to see a more detailed usage of the policy module, I have a test file that is quite long, but it covers pretty much all edge cases. So you can get an idea of how you can combine different policies. So for example, in this one, you can combine the or. So either this must pass or this one. And as you can see, we can have nested composition. And that's it. Make sure to check the description for the link of this repository. And if you have any questions or feedback, do let me know in the comments. Anyway, I hope you learned something new. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.